Hey guys, it's Thomas. I'm here with Body Sketch today to cover conventional deadlift. Now we're gonna go over three main points. The first one's gonna be understanding the common mistakes people make when deadlifting. The second portion is gonna be showing you guys how a deadlift should be done. So we're gonna go over in depth each portion of the deadlift, which there are three. We'll cover that in a bit. And the last thing we're gonna cover is understanding when and why to use gear for deadlift. Before I get started, I'm gonna go over a couple things that people should know before they think about deadlifting. If you have back issues, I recommend not deadlifting at all and figuring out what those back issues are with your doctor or a trained professional and fix them before you deadlift. And if you are gonna deadlift, I recommend that you take everything we do here today seriously because it's gonna help you understand how to deadlift effectively while being able to not injure your back and get a good strength workout for your lower back. All right, so first things first, we're gonna go over common mistakes in deadlift. All right, today we have Tomas. We're gonna demonstrate what hitching is. Hitching is essentially locking out the legs before finishing with the hips. This is very bad when, and if you do do this, make sure that you stop doing it because it puts your lower back into a very bad position which can eventually result in injury. And injuries, as we all know, inhibits us from continuing to make progress. So do not hitch. The next mistake would be bending arms. Bending arms when you deadlift is very bad. Bending the arms when you deadlift is bad for your bicep muscle. This is why some people get a torn bicep. If you look up torn biceps, it is essentially the bicep tearing from the bone and the tendons that it should be attached to. The next deadlift mistake would be bad thigh position. Thigh position is very important when it comes to deadlift so that you can find the most explosive and strongest position. As you can see, Tomas is showing us a very bad thigh position. He is at a 180 degrees. This is not the most explosive position one could be when it comes to deadlift. As you can see, there's, you can also see that there's a lot longer range of motion. And this is how you should do it. It shouldn't be 180 degrees. If anything, it should be right around 120 degrees. Running your back is a very bad position to put your back in. It could result in injury, which is very bad. It also increases the range of motion and disengages the lats. And when you disengage the lats, it reduces the amount of weight you can actually pull off the ground. All right, now we're in the portion where we're gonna be describing how to do a proper form for conventional deadlift. Now the first thing we're gonna go over is understanding proper leg position. Now Jorge is about 5'7", right? 5'6". Five, 5'6". Six. Five, six. So his leg position is gonna be about shoulder width apart. Now the first immediate thing that he's gonna do is gonna place both his arms to the sides of his legs. The first thing you want to notice is that his arms are really close to his legs so that when he tightens up, his arms are grazing the sides of his legs. And this is really important because you want to create a very tight, explosive position for conventional deadlift. Now the second thing we're going to discuss is understanding how to get your thigh into a good, strong position. So the best way to explain it is understanding that your shoulders should be directly over the bar. All right, so George here is, is demonstrating how to put your shoulders directly over the bar. And now he's gonna get his hamstrings into the right position. So for George, this is his typical start point for a deadlift. Now the second thing you notice is that he has a 
pretty straight back and he's created this by contracting those shoulder shoulder blades back all right the next thing we're going to start going over is understanding how deadlift is a spring action so when you're deadlifting it shouldn't be it should be a fluid upward motion almost like a spring so we're gonna have george here go up to the halfway point to show you how to start a deadlift as you notice, his hip is still in a very open position. His legs have not locked out. There's a lot of tension right now. So what I'm gonna have him do is finish by locking out his hips. And that's how you finish the secondary portion of a deadlift. Now he's gonna demonstrate two reps on how to deadlift. All right, now the last and probably most important thing is understanding how to get your body into a tight, compact position for deadlift. So George is gonna get himself into his deadlift position. Right here, you'll notice that he has contracted his core, which means he's seeping in his stomach to tighten up his core completely. By doing that, he straightened out his lower and mid back. Now. His shoulders are already in a tight position and that's helping him finish the straightness of his upper back. If you can complete these three things, you'll have a nice tight position for your deadlift. It's pretty tiring, so once you get in a tight position, you should just do your deadlift. All right. Last thing, and probably the most important thing for beginners, is understanding how not to bend your arms when starting the deadlift. George is pretty comfortable doing deadlifts, so it's not really an issue for him. But when you're a beginner, you tend to bend at the arms. So to stop this from happening, you rotate your elbows forward, like George's, and that creates a very tight position for your elbows. We're gonna quickly go over understanding the two main grip forms for deadlift. The first one that George is demonstrating here is double over. His thumbs are also behind the bar, grappling it the full way. The main benefit of double over is that for beginners, they won't have a problem activating both sides of their back at the same time. So this provides a very stable position for beginners. However, there comes a point in time when you can't hold the weight you're doing with double over. So the most popular grip used is the mixed grip. Typically, you'll use your dominant arm as the one hand that is over, and you'll use your weak arm as the one that is under. All right, so mixed grip, you're gonna have to put your dominant hand in the over position and your weak hand in the underhand position. Now the one downfall to this is that beginners have a hard time activating both sides of the back at the same time. So for this, you have to be extra careful that you're lifting both sides of the bar at the same time. It's gonna take a while to get used to, but you need to learn this grip if you wanna progress into the heavy weights for deadlift. Uh, the last thing that me and George are gonna go over is gear and when to use it. So there's two, there's two ways to help your grip out. So we have straps. You can use these with or without shot. And what this does is it creates a hinge from your wrist to the bar. So it basically deletes having to worry about your forearm and it just holds the bar for you. Uh, the best alternative, one that I like using a lot, is chalk. You'll typically be using chalk with your double over or your mixed grip, and this increases the amount of friction between your hand and the bar, and it helps your grip out a lot because all that sweat isn't making your hands slip from the bar. And then the last thing 
George is gonna demonstrate where to place a belt and I'm gonna be going over why and when to use a belt. So the main reason you'll use a belt is if you're nearing your max, so anywhere from 80 to 100% effort, you're gonna put this at about slightly above your midline, right, right over your belly button actually, and you're gonna get it fairly tight. And what this is gonna help you do is it's gonna help you activate your core so that you can have it tight throughout the whole motion. Now, the reason you only use this towards the end is because you wanna be training your core. You don't want to be giving your core a lesser workout. So when you're first starting, the important thing to do is to train your core the most you can. And the best way to do that is to not use a belt until you've reached 80 to 100% of your maximal effort. One, a key thing you guys should know about straps is that when you're using straps, you gotta go double over. What do I mean by double over? As Tomas explained, it's when your hands are right above the bar, like this. This is gonna give you the most stable and the most effective way to pull. What I don't want you all to do is, when you're using straps, to go under grip. One, that defeats the purpose of using straps. And two, everyone's gonna know you're a noob. Don't be a noob. Do not do this. Do not do this. Remember, stick to double over when it comes to straps. Don't be a noob. Stay swole. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, leave some comments so that we know what you guys want to see next. And uh, remember, stay swole.